I'm Heidi Shorts. Welcome to another Creative Lettering Art Lesson. As you remember, words are very important, not just by what they mean, but sometimes by the way they look, by the way the letters are formed, by the way they're decorated. That can add a whole new layer of meaning to words as well. And that's what we're doing together as we have this Creative Lettering Lesson. For today's lesson, as we look at the Easter season, we're going to be taking a look at the word glory. Glory speaks of God's splendor, of His grandeur, of His radiance, and of His presence. And that makes me think about light. When I think of light, it's a perfect example of the Easter story. When I think about Good Friday and the darkness and the despair that surrounded Calvary as many people were gathered and watched Jesus die, I, I can't help but contrast that with how that changed and how that sadness was replaced by joy and hope on Easter morning as friends of Jesus went to the tomb bright and early in the morning as the sun was beginning to rise and they found the tomb was empty and Jesus was alive. How glorious that must have been and um, how exciting that we have an opportunity to maybe take just maybe a little bit of that glory and put it into our lettering for today. So for our lesson, let's take a look at what supplies we might be needing. First thing we need is some paper. Plain white paper is just fine, or any light colored paper will do. You'll also need a number two pencil, the kind that you probably have at school or you have at home. You'll also need a ruler, a pencil sharpener, a good white artist eraser for taking care of any adjustments that you need to make or any corrections. You'll need some colored pencils. It really doesn't matter what brand you use, but a nice assortment of colored pencils would be great. You'll also be needing some extreme colors. These are some fabulous colors that we'll be using quite a bit at the end of our lesson. And you'll need a black light. And if you don't have one, you can get one at the See the Light store. Okay, so you're going to be now taking your paper and you're going to be turning it landscape style. This is portrait, this is landscape. Here's my paper. Mine's a little larger than what you have at home and that's just because I want to make sure that you can see so mine's a little bit larger. But you'll be taking your paper, laying it on your table, take your ruler and your number two pencil. And this is where we start to create some guidelines. Guidelines are those really light lines that we put into place to help us know where to put our letters, uh, where to create the different shapes, and then the lines are nice and light so that later you can erase them because we don't need them anymore. You'll take your ruler and you'll lay it across the middle of your paper. And I'm going to stop for just a moment because I'm going to switch my number two pencil with a dark black pencil so that you can see it at home. I know that you won't be able to see my light lines and I'm also going to take my glasses because I need those right now. Okay, I'm going to take my ruler, place it across the middle of my paper and then I'm going to hold it nice and tight so that it doesn't wobble and I will trace along the upper edge of my ruler and then I'll trace along the bottom edge of my ruler. I've now created my very first two guidelines. Now I'll take my ruler again, place it along the top line, hold it nice and tight and then I'm going to trace it one more time. What I've now created are three lines that together create a top strip and a bottom strip. And this is where we're going to be placing our letters. The bottom strip is the strip where we typically place most of our lowercase letters. And then the capitals will touch both the top and the bottom. Okay, we are ready to get started with our letters. We are going to start with a capital G. For our word glory, we're going to have one capital and four lowercase. So I'm going to start by coming up here to the top and I'm going to touch the top line, swing my arm around, touch the bottom line, and then come up to this middle line and come back. And you can do this with me at home. So you have a very simple, very clean capital G. 
Then I'm going to scoot over a little ways and I'm going to create a lowercase l. And I'm going to do a couple of interesting things with this l. First of all, it's going to be nice and tall like a normal L, but it's going to have a little hook at the bottom. If you're familiar with the Danelian alphabet, then this might look familiar to you. I'm going to start up here at the top, come down straight, and then make a little hook on the bottom, kind of like a backwards J. Something else you'll notice, as I said, most lowercase letters will sit along this bottom strip. Well, the L is so tall, it comes up here into this top strip. As it goes up, it ascends, and that's why this letter has what is called an ascender. That is this part of the letter. So we now have a G, an L. We're going to scoot over a little ways so that we have about the same distance between our letters, and we're going to create a lowercase o. Then we'll scoot over about the same distance, and we're going to be creating our lowercase r. We're going to do something uh, very similar to what we did with our L. Instead of being really tall, though, it's going to be short between these two lines, but we are going to make it straight with a little hook on the bottom. Then we're going to come up a little ways from our line here and make a little bump that touches the line. We're going to scoot over one more time, about the same distance, and we're going to create that same curve as the beginning of our R and as our L, except that the curve at the bottom is going to be a little bit deeper. Can you see what I mean? And now on the tail of our Y, we're going to make what looks like a letter J, starting at our center line, coming down, and hooking over. The fun thing about lettering is that you're doing a series of strokes, basically. And as we put those strokes together, we create a variety of letters. And so we have taken what is the same stroke for these three letters, then I've taken a J, put them together, and now I have a Y. Looks pretty good. Nice, clear letters, but not terribly creative yet. So this is where we get to start adding some personality to our letters. What we're going to do next is we're going to add a funny little stroke called a serif. And a serif is a slanted line that we put at the beginning of some letters. We're going to put one here at the top of our L. We'll put another one here at the top of our R. And then we'll put one at the beginning of our Y and one on the back of our Y starting to add a little more personality. Those are serifs. They're now in place. Next step, we're going to give some weight, some beefiness to our letters. We're going to widen them just a little bit. And we're going to do that by starting at the top of each of our letters. And we're going to add that width by adding another line. We're going to start at the top of the G, up here where it touches the line. We're going to swing our arm around so that it is wide on the side, and then we'll come back down around to the bottom where it's skinny again. It looks kind of like a crescent moon. You can see that shape right here on the side. I'm now going to scoot over to the right-hand side of my G, and I'm also going to echo the shape like I did over here. So I want to keep it about the same, at the same width. I'm going to come over here on this line about halfway. I'm going to come down, and then I'm going to meet the bottom of my J where it begins to narrow. I have a wider section up here at the top and skinnier down here at the bottom. I'm going to do the same thing now over on my L. I'm going to come up a little ways on my serif, and then straight down and then I'm going to meet down at the bottom where it becomes skinny again. Scoot over a little ways, and I'm going to do the same thing with my O. This crescent shape on the side of my G will be repeated over here on the side of my O. You can see skinny top and bottom, wide on the side. Now when I do the right-hand side of my O, I could go on the outside, but for this particular lesson, I'm just going to do the same kind of shape, but I'm going to do it on the inside of my O. So starting at the top, I'm going to come around, wide on the side, 
and narrow on the bottom. Scoot over a bit to my R, go up my serif a bit, straight down and over to my curve. Over to my Y, I will do the same thing. Now, when I get to the end of my Y, I'm going to beef up my tail so that it is nice and wide like the beginning of my letter. I'm going to go up the serif a little ways, straight down, and meet down at this hook or this tail. Now, we talked about the ascender over here with the letter L because it goes above the line. For my Y, this tail comes down and it goes under the line, comes down, or it descends. So this is called a descender. We have an ascender and a descender. So you've now learned some technical terms. Okay, one more thing before we start to add some color. I'm going to add a few little triangles. When we did the word rejoice at Christmas time, we added some triangles to the end of some of our letters, and they had nice straight sides. For this particular lesson, we're going to add triangles, but we're going to curve the sides a little bit. For example, up here at the top of my G, I'm going to create this little curved line with a bottom to create my triangle. Over here on my R, same thing. I'm going to come down, make a curved line, add a bottom. I now have a little curved triangle. And down here at the bottom of my Y, on my descender, I'm going to make a curved line with a top, and I now have a triangle. My letters are starting to look fabulous, don't you think? And I bet yours look great at home, too. This is a really good time for you to stop Take a look at what you've done. See if you need to make any adjustments or any changes. You've done your, your guidelines so nice and lightly that if you took your white eraser right now and erased those lines and made those adjustments, it would look fabulous. So take a look and make what changes you need. And then we're going to start thinking about color. I particularly like darker colors, and I think that for you at home, it's easier for you to see. So I'm going to choose a purple colored pencil to fill in my letters. So I'm going to do that next. And as you can see, all my letters, all my spaces are filled in with a nice dark purple and I've taken away all my guidelines because I don't need them anymore. And look at how much better it looks once you do that. It starts to have some personality. By itself, this word looks great, but we want to take the next step and we want to add even more meaning, even more personality to this letter to really convey the glory of God. And we're going to do that with a box. We're going to be framing out the capital G in the word glory. If you remember when we did rejoice, we created an illuminated letter. Illuminate means to call attention to or to focus on something. And we focused on the center letter, the O, in the word rejoice by adding a picture of baby Jesus. In this particular word, we're also going to have an illuminated letter, but it's going to be the G. It's going to be at the beginning of the word. So this is where we're going to start. We're going to create a very simple rectangular box around the capital G. And I'm making it very close to my letter G. And it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. You want to just make it as close as you can. And of course, if you're doing this with guidelines, you can erase it later and make any adjustments you need. Now I'm going to scoot out just a little bit, and I'm going to create the same shape, but just a little bit bigger, so that it looks like a border or a frame around my capital G. And as you can see, my lines aren't actually perfect, but once we get everything filled in, it's going to look fabulous. Okay, so we now have a box, a frame, a border. It has a lot of different names around your capital G. We're going to go back and let's add some corner squares or some corner blocks. 
I'm just taking my pencil and I'm completing each of these corners to give me just one more little design element. Now before I go any further, I want to think about these long strips right here. These long sides that are basically long skinny rectangles. We're going to fill them with a simple design. And I want to show you a couple of examples of designs that you could choose. Because those rectangles are very thin, there's just not a lot of room to do anything really, really creative. So we're going to keep it as simple as we can. We can create a zigzag, which looks like a series of triangles inside your shape. And it's okay if it doesn't completely fill to the end. We can also do a curved line. These are very simple patterns, very simple shapes that will help dress up our frame. Or I can do something like a checkerboard that would alternate colors perhaps, black, white, black, white, black, white, something like that. So a pattern of some sort that is very simple to fill our space. And I think for mine, I'm going to do a zigzag. And you can see that I'm not taking a lot of time to do this. It's fairly simple, but it's giving this G a little more personality besides just a plain box. So, my simple frame is in place. I'm ready for color, but I want to do one more thing first. I'm going to be adding a very simple illustration inside my frame. I often think about uh, when I look at the clouds on, a, on an overcast day and I see the light bursting forth from the clouds, it always reminds me of God. And, and it kind of thinks, makes me think about Easter morning and, um, and just what it might have been like at, at sunrise. And so I'm going to be creating a cloud with the sun shining from behind to give me that feeling of God's glory and his light coming forth. So I'm going to go in with my number two pencil so that I can make adjustments later. And I'm going to illustrate a very simple cloud in this lower right-hand corner. Inside our O for rejoice, we had our picture. For the G, not only is our picture going to be kind of inside the G, but also around the G. So you have lots of choices when you're illuminating letters. You can add any details that you like um, in any way that will help enhance your word. We have our cloud in place. Let's put a sun behind it. And now let's put some simple rays of light that will come from the sun and extend behind the G. Okay, so we now have our simple illuminated letter in place. We've got beautiful, clean, nice, strong letters for the word glory. Now it's time to start adding some color. Give it way more personality and really make this word come to life. I bet your picture is looking great right now and I'm excited to see where this goes. Now I'm going to switch. I've used my purple pencil and I am going to put that back and go to my extreme colors. This is where we start to have some fun with our black light. These are the colors that will really come to life for us. Okay, You have lots of choices here. I think I'm going to start with my light blue. This is called Absolute Zero. We've got some great names here. And I'm going to come over to my cloud And I'm going to shade the edges. And I'm even going to add some more little lumps and bumps here just to kind of reflect the puffiness of a cloud. And I'm not filling in the whole thing because I want to also see some of the white of a fluffy cloud. Okay? 
Now I'm going to come over and I think I'm going to choose this yellow, which is called Lemon Glacier, and I'm going to create a really bright sunrise. Taking this yellow, I'm going to fill in my sun. I think I'm leaving a few little places where I can add some more color because artists sometimes like to mix colors, do some shading, bring things to life with extra, extra color and dimension. This one's called Heat Wave. And where I did not put yellow, I'm going to put some of this. And I actually think I'll outline with a little heat wave here. Okay? Boy, already you can see that the sun is nice and bright. It really does remind me of, of perhaps early morning. Now we have the rays of light coming from the sun. And you can use a combination of these colors. I can go back in, use some more of this along my guidelines. And then also, because those are just guides, I can add more things if I'd like. I'm going to add lots of rays of sun. I'm going to go back to my yellow. We want this sunrise to be absolutely glorious. So the more light, the better. And you can use really any combination of colors that you like. I think I will add one more. Boy, I would like lots of yellow on this. I'm going to add one more. Let's try Sizzling Sunset. Even though it's morning, I think it's okay to use a little Sizzling Sunset. Okay, so I'm adding a little bit of that for some contrast. And I want to make sure that not only do I have some of these colors inside my G, but also peeking around to the back of my G. Okay, I do have some empty spaces, and if I want, I can go back with some of my blue and put some in because you've got your sky peeking through those rays of light. got a big patch of sky up here in my corners. So your picture is really coming to life now. It's amazing what color can do. Okay. Beautiful. So we have the sun shining looking pretty good, don't you think? So let's take a look now at our border. That's looking pretty boring compared to our sunrise. So let's pick some colors that we might want to use to frame our capital G. Now remember, we don't want to take away from the word, we want to add to it. So instead of maybe adding more purple, which might be confusing, I'm going to be picking a color that is different. And you know I haven't used green yet, spring frost. And because I haven't used it, I think I'm going to put it in the corners. And then I'll decide what colors I want to create the frame. I think I'll go back to this wonderful absolute zero. And I'll do some of my triangles with it. And I'm alternating these in a pattern so that when I add another color, it will create some interest instead of blending together to call attention to the letter G, which will also call attention to my word glory.
this will take you a couple of minutes and you might need your pencil sharpener because as you do this you may wear down your lead just a little bit. I kind of like this bright orange. This one is my sizzling sunset. I'm going to add some more of that to my border. I'm putting together blue and orange in my border. Those are what are called complementary colors. They are opposite on the color wheel and when you place them together it gives your artwork a lot of energy. And really when you think about Easter morning and the excitement of what took place, that might be a really good choice. To learn more about complementary colors and the color wheel, take a look at some of Pat Nepley's art classes at seethelightshine.com. Okay, almost done. One more side. You can see how this is really coming to life. It was interesting before with just the pattern, but as we add color, there we go. Awesome. We now have glory. We have an illuminated letter that highlights the first letter of the word, but also the word itself. It captures some of the meaning of the word glory so that not only knowing what it says is helpful, but now you can see what it says as well to give you the feel of glory. Let me put my colored pencils down. And this is your opportunity to get out your black light. And we are going to take a moment, turn on our light, and see what our word looks like. As I think about Jesus, the first Easter, and the promise of new life, I can't help but think about God's glory as well. I look forward to seeing you again for another Creative Lettering Art Lesson. To God be the glory, and have a glorious Easter.